What's going on, people? It's your man, DM Koo, and I'm here to drop a quick video blog about the NBA Dunk Contest and, you know, some of the grievances that I've had with it over the years, not just with the contest, but with the people, you know, the fans and critics who are judging it and stuff like that. But before I get into that, uh, quick updates, cool radio related. The video for the interview that I did with Juno nominated artist Melanie Durant is now up, so please watch that and enjoy. And also this week's past this past week's episode, the full episode audio podcast, is now online. Check it out at soundcloud.com. And uh, also follow and subscribe both the SoundCloud and the YouTube page at cool underscore radio as well. Alright. Okay. Now let's get into this dunk contest stuff. Now, one of the constant criticisms that I keep hearing from people over the years is that the dunk contest is so lame nowadays and there's no originality. But the one criticism that I always hear is the fact that it's not good anymore because there are no big name stars that ever want to be a part of it. Now, here's the misconception with that judgment call right there. If you really think about it and you look back at all the tapes from 1976 up until today, the dunk contest never had, never really had more than one big name star at a time within a dunk contest. For example, if you look back to the 80s in particular, because they only had one dunk contest and that was in 1976, that was more ABA. But if you look back into the 80s, the only big names that were really in the dunk contest and names that were participating with one another at the same time were Michael Jordan, Dr. J, Dominique Wilkins, and Clyde Drexler. You cannot tell me that there are any other big names during that period of time. And if you really want to get into the specifics, the only times where you had two megastars competing against each other in a dunk off were MJ and Dominique. Spud Webb wasn't a big name. He was popular because of how small he was. Larry Nance wasn't a big name, so I don't see why people are arguing or disputing that there are always big names in the dunk off. No, there was not at all. Very few. And then even if you go into the 90s, a lot of people in the 90s actually weren't really big name. Sean Kemp, he was somewhat of a big name. He was a rising name. Larry Johnson, a rising name as well, too. D. Brown, he won the dunk contest. Cedric Sabalos, do you remember him? The Blindfold. There were a lot of guys. I mean, Harold Miner, back in 1995, he wasn't a big name either. What people fail to realize is that not just a dunk contest, but with All-Star Weekend in general, it is a profile builder. So if you are a lesser known player, then the All-Star Weekend is your chance to show off your specialties and whatever your skill set is. For example, for people who aren't familiar with Kyle Korver, he's going to be participating in a three-point contest, and that's his specialty right there. Would we have known who Nate Robinson was had he not participated back in 2006? I probably wouldn't have. Maybe I would because I'm a basketball guy, but nonetheless, before he was in that contest, nobody knew who he was. Now everyone knows him, not just for a dunk, but his off-the-bench production skills, him being a quick scorer off the bench. People know him for that nowadays. And that's what I'm trying to tell people. It is a profile builder. So don't just automatically assume that because there are big names in not just dunk contests, but in any of the events in general, that it's going to be better. It creates more hype, but it doesn't mean that it's going to be better. I mean, think about it like this. 2000. Vince Carter participated in the dunk contest. By then, he had already become a big-name superstar. He had been in the league. It was the second season that year. He was just electrifying the crowd with dunks. So, fair enough. You can give him that. But then afterwards, in 2001, you had guys like Baron Davis, Corey McGetty, Desmond Mason who participated in that contest. 2002, you had Jason Richardson, a rookie, win the dunk competition. I believe Steve Francis was in that one as well, too. That was the second one in there. 2003... Again, Jason Richardson and Desmond Mason participated in that one. They weren't all-stars. They were not. They were just guys who were known for dunking. But they still made it exciting. That was one of the best head-to-head -head showdowns in dunk contest history. And if you look at all the guys, or the majority of the guys who won the dunk contest, they were up-and-coming names. Josh Smith won it in 05. He wasn't a big-name guy. Fred Jones won it the year before in 2004. Do, we, do you even know who Fred Jones is? That's what I thought. 2006, Nate Robinson really should have been um, Andre Iguodala, but that's none of my business. Um, <laughs> 2008, 
2007, Gerald Green. He was a rookie as well, too. And now he's on the Phoenix Suns. And we now know him as, you know, somewhat of a, of a, of a, of a production guy. 2008, I believe it was Dwight Howard. Now, a lot of people forget that he was in a dunk contest in 07, but got bounced out in the first round. That contest right there in 08 was what catapulted him to him being like more of a mainstream name. 2009, Nate Robinson again. More for his size and his stature. 2010, he won it again. He robbed it from my man DeMar DeRozan. But again, none of my business. And then 2011, Blake Griffin won it. He had just become an all-star by that time anyways. So you guys see where I'm going with this. It's not always the big established names that win it. It's Most of the time, it's more the up-and-coming names. So don't be discouraged if guys like Russell Westbrook LeBron James, Dwayne Wade, etc., etc., don't want to participate in it. Who cares? Just because they're a big name doesn't mean that they're going to uh, electrify the crowd. They might do the most basic dunks, and when it's all said and done, you're still you're going to be even more disappointed than anything because of the names that create so much hype and they leave you feeling you know deflated if they underperform. So don't get mad if those guys don't want to participate in those contests anymore or at all. Who cares? And that leads me to the competition for this year. You got you have guys like Mason Plumley, Zach Levine, uh, uh, Giannis Antetokounmpo, uh, Victor Oladipo, those guys. Sure, they're lesser known. They're a bunch of first, second year guys, but give them a chance. You haven't really seen what they could do, so don't go dismissing the dunk contest already. I mean, look at the three-point contest. That that three-point contest is stacked this year, I will admit. But what happens if these guys can't even go beyond 15 racks? Then what? Then then what are you going to say? Oh, three-point contest is lame. I mean, James Harden was in it. Steph Curry was in it. But they didn't do... Who cares? It doesn't mean they're going to perform greatly even more than a lesser-known guy. So let's not be biased. Give these guys a chance. You may never know. The dunk contest this year might steal the show. I'm not saying it will, but at the same time, I'm saying do not dismiss it altogether. Chill. Just chill. That's all I'm saying, people. People are losing their minds. Like, oh, why can't Westbrook be in it anymore? I, I, I want to I see Carmelo in it. Please. If you got the hops, then I will give you the benefit of the doubt until I actually see the dunk. So just chill. And this whole notion that Big names have always been in it. No, you've had rising names in it. Kobe was in it, but he wasn't a big name. He was just popular off the strength that he was a rookie coming in from high school and he had a similar game to MJ. That was it. He wasn't an established star. He was only averaging, averaging seven and a half points per game that year. And he still made it into the all-star game just because of a certain few similarities to MJ and what have you. So again, don't buy into the hype. Wait until they actually perform and then judge accordingly. That's all I got to say. So what do you guys think? Let your comments be known in the description below, please. I want to know what you guys feel about this. I was going to write this out in a blog, but it would have been too much. So you have video. There you go. Digest it and let me know what you think. Will I do a post video after this? Possibly. And a um, little FYI side note, I'm currently uploading a video right now that I did on Cool Radio this past Thursday. So that will be up uh, pretty soon. So I'll let you guys know. But anyways, I'm out of here. Enjoy Valentine's Day, people, to all the, all the couples, all the playboys and playgirls, and to all the dudes who are staying in with their with their lovers who are watching the NBA All-Star Weekend or All-Star Saturday. Tonight, you're the real MVP. DM, cool. Peace. Keep it gravy and wavy. Yeah.